Hello, everyone. I am Lauren, and this is Brittany. And wow, that was a really gay intro. <laughs> Damn it, am I allowed to say gay, or will this, like, take down the video? I don't okay, know. whatever. That's fine. We don't care. We don't care, because YouTube, you're not my mom. You don't get to decide what I do. Uh, but welcome to our podcast that has no name. So we yes. actually need some suggestions in the comments for names. Uh, we aren't going to pick the one with the most upvotes, because otherwise this show will be called Butt Hitler Watermelon or something. <laughs> wonderful like that but yeah we're definitely gonna sift through some of the comments and see which ones we like and maybe we'll pick one Brittany to you yeah super exciting so for today's well actually before we get into today's topic should we first go through oh right if oh. you watched our introduction video we have some exciting news we actually have sponsors for this so we don't have to rely on the ridiculous patreon google youtube collusion to absolutely mm -hmm. destroy conservatives and we found some wonderful companies that are happy to sponsor this show and that brings me to our first one which is virtual shield and as i'm sure some of you are aware recently laws were passed in the uk canada and the us mm -hmm. and australia that will allow big companies like verizon comcast or at&t to sell your browsing history and i'm sure that <laughs> that sends a bit of you into some worry <laughs> so what a lot of people People have been doing is downloading something called a VPN, a virtual private network, so your sensitive data can't be accessed by private or public Wi-Fi networks. And you can, of course, you can get these VPNs for free, but as is obvious, you get what you pay for. So a lot of these free, PN, free VPNs that you might get, they are not totally secure. Also, the fact that they're free, you know, everyone goes for them, so there's an overload, and as a result, there is a lack of bandwidth. So you probably do want to get one that is paid. So if you'd rather not have your door busted down for making right-wing social media posts like in Germany or you're more into the uh Kurt Eichenwald stuff and don't want your mom finding out, well then Virtual Shield has your back. And they're one of the easiest, fastest to use VPN in the world. So I definitely check that out. And even cooler, with the promo code Lauren, you can get 20% off. Check that out in the description if you are interested. And if not, no worries, because we are headed into the podcast topics now. And none of our sponsors actually dictate what we say in our videos or what we talk about, which is awesome and which is why we are happy to support them and to have them support us. So Brittany, what are we talking about today? So today, for today's topic, something that actually we're both really excited about is escapism. And for those who don't really know what that is, it's kind of when you will escape into outlets such as entertainment, it could be books, movies, whatever, or you can even try to live vicariously through other people like celebrities or something, how we do so much in our culture in order to kind of escape the reality that you're in now. So. I mean, obviously, this kind of stuff is okay in moderation, but when you do it to such an extent that you don't have time for your real life, or you're, you know, not doing anything else, you're just kind of in your basement all day on your computer, or reading or watching movies or whatever, then obviously it's very damaging. So we thought it would be interesting to talk about the topic of escapism mm -hmm. today, particularly because we're both very guilty of it. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very guilty. And especially because it affects, I think, even the political community it impacts the political community and also like the wider world. If you see yeah. people on their phone all day, just like this, like scrolling for a million years because they're yeah. more interested in their Instagram posts and the articles on Cosmo, that's a form of escapism just as much as like when we were kids, Brittany, and I just, yeah. well, not even kids, when I was a teenager and I'd sit and I'd just play video games for hours and hours and hours. So maybe we should start with how we are guilty of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I watched so many movies, TV shows. I was obsessed with anime. Most, most people are surprised when they hear that, but I loved anime. I have so many anime shows on my laptop still that I, that I go back and watch sometimes, but not as much. I also, I read tons of books, obviously. And I think, to be honest, the real reason I, st I actually started writing in the first place was because it was a form of escapism, so I picked fantasy. But obviously down the road I started taking it seriously and actual forming business connections and stuff like that, but it was more to, I didn't like reality, I didn't want to be associated. So I kind of would create my world through my books and the one that I wanted to live in. I also did this when I was little too, I literally created an entire world of horses in my mind when I was little, because I loved them so much. It was, it was really weird. Maybe I you know what, no. It's so weird because it's kind of like, you, you know how people compare and they say, oh, it's 1984, it's 1984 happening yeah. today. And people kind of correct them and be like, no, 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 it's uh, A Brave New World. It's Huxley's book that was yeah. right because we've actually decided to live in this 1984 state. We're the, we're the ones who elected these people. We're the ones who gave up our information. We're the ones that have decided we need this mass censorship. Well, it's kind of like 
the matrix, except we've decided to live in the matrix, right? Exactly. We've decided to hook ourselves up to these machines and ignore everything in reality. Everyone is taking the blue pill and they're just doing it in different forms. And some people think different forms are more defensible than others. Now, I do want to mention that in my notes here, I was looking into a ton of research on this and there's escapism versus refueling. So refueling is when you intermittently escape to alternative realities so you can better deal with reality when you return, which is totally healthy. Watching a movie between after a hard day of work yeah. and then making dinner and having dinner with your family, totally cool. And then there's escapism, which is escaping to alternative realities in order to avoid reality completely, which is totally destructive, which I think is what you were talking about, where it's like you were yeah. scared of the outside world and even engaging with it. Yeah, it's it's like these things, obviously, they're good, but in moderation. It's kind of like even with eating food, pretty much everything you do, if you don't do it in moderation, then it becomes a very uh, a negative thing. But in regards to the Brave New World, I could not, like everyone always says 1984, 1984. And I do think that that is very relevant to our current society. But I've, I've mentioned in videos in the past that I think Brave New World is way more relevant because our society is one that's enslaved far more through pleasure than through, you know, um, uh, threats of fear and pain and these kinds of things. And many people, it, it's even worse because when you're enslaved through pleasure, you either don't realize you're enslaved or even if you do, you're willing to. Uh, kind of surrender access to certain little freedoms uh, in order to to retain access to things like entertainment, whether it be you know movies, television, porn, you know whatever your your entertainment might be. So. I would go even further to say it's even more depressing than that because we're not just <laughs> enslaved by the pleasure, but we're d enslaved by the desire for pleasure. Like yeah. the, the research on this escapism thing was really scary. Like listen to this. So. Dopamine causes us to want, to desire, to seek out, and to search. It is the opioid system that causes one to feel pleasure, yet the dopamine system is much stronger than the opioid system. So we seek more than we are satisfied. So we're eternally seeking, and we don't yeah. even always get this satisfaction. It's kind of like, it, it's so much more depressing than that. <laughs> exactly. Or And then also the fact that it's transient. It's something that's just, it's kind of like taking a shot, you know. It might satisfy you to an extent in the moment, but then it's over and it's gone and you're out for your next hit. But I think something interesting actually to explore is what, why do you think people are so inclined towards escapism nowadays? And maybe it's growing well, as a problem. I think our futures, especially for young people, because you see this really, really badly among young people, we kind of feel like we don't have futures, like our futures have been totally sold. Um, a lot of people are saying, uh, for example, conservatism, I was reading a really interesting article about it the other day, and it's like young people aren't becoming right wing because they want to conserve anything. So conservative is kind of the wrong word. They're becoming right wing because they feel like they want to restore something that was lost. Like there's something missing and they don't really have a future there. Uh, our social systems are now so generous to strangers. They're no longer sustainable for ourselves. Can't afford houses. The marriage system has been totally destroyed. The idea of having a family is not just like, destroyed in us mentally by our schooling and indoctrination, but it's hard to even have because there's so few people that even want that anymore. You can't find a partner who wants that. And the state certainly doesn't support it financially. So what future is there to look forward to? Exactly. What world is there to participate in? That's actually a super important point. It's like people either have lost their purpose or they're not able to even find one in the first place. And when you don't have a purpose and you're going to look for other purposes, you know, the transient ones, fleeting though they may be, but you still will get something from those and feel like you have a purpose at least for a few hours or, what, or, or whatever. But if you do have a purpose, something you're really dedicated towards, then obviously you're not going to be uh, enslaved by escapism to such a degree. You won't even have time for it because you'll be so dead set on your purpose and fulfilling that and succeeding at it. So I definitely mm -hmm. think that's a huge thing. But, but I was also thinking about it and... I think to an extent, even like the social justice warriors, it's a form of escapism. Like there, it's not even reality anymore. There's like, well, a, right. you know, hundreds of genders, all, all these kinds of things. It's like, it's not objective reality. It's subjective. It's just one they're creating that, that we're supposed to kind of adapt to. Well, they're trying to create a problem to fight for because they mm -hmm. want to feel so badly like they're fighting that civil rights fight. They mm -hmm. want to feel like they're fighting for something important because we grew up our whole lives being told we have to be these heroes of justice and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's no 
real fights for them anymore because they've all been fought and won already, except the very real fights against Islam, except the very real fights that are almost too scary for them to even address or look towards. So they have this escapism and they completely ignore all the problems within it and just like yeah. focus on their fake built up realities. And that's something that was also really interesting when I was looking at the research on video games. So video game addiction predominantly affects single white males. And a lot of people said they felt they were duty bound to go online, that people were relying on them. Online games like World of Warcraft or EVE Online feature massive worlds, so massive that you're not very strong by yourself and people aren't too strong without you. All for one and one for all counts double if you're a gamer. So most people join guilds in games factions in order to achieve more within their virtual life. But with that benefit comes the cost, social responsibility. Often you need to play the game every day. Often it means several hours Per, per day. If you don't play, there are people, granted somewhere else in the world, who will think badly of you. So mm -hmm. that's so crazy to me that they feel more social obligation to this fake setup reality than they do real life because they literally feel like the goals that they're fighting for in these fake realities that they've built up are more important than the ones in real life because it's just become so yeah. purposeless. Exactly. And I wonder if this is almost, at least to some extent, a result of the social justice warrior kind of, you know, this this whole kind of society that they're creating and the people that don't fit in and that hate it and detest it are retreating to different places such as video games and these kinds of things because they mm -hmm. just can't deal. There's some people, of course, that are out there publicly fighting it on Twitter, those kinds of things, and I'm sure some of these people are as well. But I think that mentally, if you're like in school all day or at college just dealing with this crap, just consuming it all day, you want to just escape and get away from it because this is reality and you don't want it to be. So you'll go yeah, to, well, to, to what you enjoy. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. And it's a, it's a state of very, very, like, oh, it's such hopelessness. And I'm sorry, I keep going back to the notes I made. But yeah, that's exactly literally what the study says. So we're mm -hmm. not just making this up. It's, yeah. Many people in the study reported that they enjoyed games because games took them out of the real world. These same people were the most likely to develop addiction-like symptoms. Why be a landscape architecture when you could be an invincible mage? Or feeling doomed to unpopularity in real life, why not join a guild online? Mm -hmm. If you're not going to get what you want out of real life, why not just go to this online world? And I, I think we should talk about the dangers of this. I mean, you, you'd think they were pretty evident, but if life is truly as horrible and meaningless as it must seem in the modern age, why not escape to this fake world for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. That's the thing, and I think it can happen to some people, and it's happening to more and more. You can watch maybe the best years of your life slip away, being distracted and indulging in these kinds of things without actually setting up um, a stable foundation and something that actually is, because a lot of escapism at its core, truth be told, is not productive. So, you know, you could be spending time doing productive things, but if you're always spending your time in, in video games or books or movies or whatever it may be, then you're not going to really progress. And then you're going to hit 30, 35, 40, whatever, and be like, what have I even accomplished? And, and maybe people don't even realize it because I really think in our culture right now, there is such a rejection of taking responsibility. And maybe that's why people should gravitate towards escapism, which is kind of like childlike in a sense. But if you look at everything, it's like there's divorce for marriage. You can get out. You don't have to take responsibility. There's abortion for pregnancies. You can get out. You don't have to take responsibility. There's even like liposuction for obesity. Like everything is designed to to not have to take responsibility for what you do. So I think that that could be um, that uh, that could be one of the factors as well. Yeah, but you also like if if you don't work for these things, you don't appreciate them, and you don't get a lasting sense of fulfillment from it. And if people like, I I, I can attest to the fact that League of Legends. I wish I hadn't put that much time of my life into League of Legends. I wish I had put it into more meaningful things, to reading books, to spending time with my family, to uh, building friendships and such. Luckily, I kind of got away from that. And I, I'm not saying that playing video games is bad. Like I said it at the beginning of this, there's good escapism where you sit down and maybe spend an hour or two just playing some video games after a hard day of work then spend time with your family. Mm -hmm. But it's when, when it got to this obsessive thing where it was like all I did for a while because I didn't want to engage with anyone else, it wasn't fulfilling and it didn't give me lasting meaning and purpose. And I truly believe you can create, even if you don't feel it, you can create meaning and purpose and happiness. I think watching Jordan Peterson videos on this, on sorting yourself out, would be the first step if you do have problems with escapism. He he talks about this a lot, and it's really, really good how much depth he gets into it and the problems it'll cause psychologically for you in the future. 
And so, but the dichotomy that you're talking about is very tricky because there's a sacrificial element in maturation, right? You have to sacrifice the pluripotentiality of childhood for the actuality of a frame. And the question is, well, why would you do that? Well, one reason is, it happens to you whether you do it or not. You can either choose your damn limitation, or you can let it take you unaware when you're 30, or even worse, when you're 40. And then that is not a happy day. And you see, I see people like this, and I think it's more and more common in our culture, because people can put off mat maturity without suffering an immediate penalty. But all that happens is the penalty accrues, and then when it finally hits, it just wallops you. Because when you're 25, you can be an idiot. It's no problem. Even when you're out in a job search, it's like, well, you don't have any experience and you're kind of clueless. It's, yeah, yeah, you're young, you know, it's no problem. We can, that's what young people are like, but they're full of potential. Okay, well, now you're the same person at 30. It's like, people aren't so thrilled about you at that point. It's like, what the hell have you been doing for the last 10 years? And I think, I mean, for me, when, when I was young, I, I had this, I mean, this problem. Like, the more I think about it, I, the worse I remember it actually being. I mean, it was at the point where I really didn't even know, get to know my oldest sister until the last year before she left the house and, and got married. And then we became super close. But I was, if I wasn't writing, I was watching movies or anime or something or just completely removed from reality. And I, I don't know really when it occurred to me that this was, this was damaging, but it did at some point. And I was like, okay, I need to be productive or... I'm just gonna be wasting my time and, and not accomplish anything and then I'm gonna suddenly be like you know thrust out onto the street and be like well you know gotta go get a job at like McDonald's or something you know because I never spent time building up for for uh, a future right and it's it's one of those things where like you have to imagine a world where what if the internet went out could could you yeah. live without it yeah because that, that that could happen to you one day I could have, could you live without it? Uh, what what about when you're on your deathbed one day? If you like, do you want to be alone? Do you do you not want to be surrounded by people who love you? This is the same thing I say to the feminists who never want to have kids because they're a strong, empowered woman. None of that virtue signaling about being a strong, empowered woman to comfort them on their deathbed when they are alone. And this is why in every single great story ever written and life advice given by old people, it's like work to have a lasting, fulfilling family and relationships around you. Like everyone says biggest regret is not spending more time yeah. with your family and all of these, it's all about family. And that that's what brings lasting meaning, happiness to your life, not anime, not not video games. I It's fleeting and fun and it's a great way to de-stress, but f lasting, fulfilling happiness is very different from fleeting happiness. Yeah, I've actually read in articles that that is the number one, uh, you can actually look it up online, it's the number one regret of people that they didn't spend enough time with their family and putting the work into those relationships, because that's how you create memories that actually mean something, that, that, that add that kind of meaning to your life. And if you don't have them, if you're, if you're spending time, even if you're watching a movie, it is an act of isolation, like the, because you might be watching it, but it's really not giving something to you in return. That that actually is going to be meaningful to you in the long run. So I really think that that's a great point, um, and that putting the time into relationships or things that are productive and that are going to benefit you later on is obviously wiser. And of course, we will probably, at least I will probably <laughs> slip into this at some point or another down the road because, you know, it just happens, especially when like Christmas comes along, you have time off. But um, mm -hmm. it definitely is a, a really good thing to be aware of. And I wish that I had been more aware, aware of it during my early teens because I could have saved so much time and been way more productive and got way more done. But but it's never too late. Uh, when I when yeah. I think about like taking this to the extreme, like all I get is this horrifying image. You know, like the Wally -E characters where they're just yes. like staring oh at their screens. Gosh. But like they're it's significantly less cute in real life. Obviously, like it's they're not little cartoons. Lauren, they get this horrifying seen, image. Have you seen? Sorry? They, they actually have photos on the internet of that. Like they have the de the devices. There's like really overweight people, and they have like screens coming over their head. They, like these kind of hat things you can wear or connect on the back of your chair and then just like drive around. So it literally is a reality in some places and it's terrifying, yes. It's it's nightmarish and imagine waking up and like the, the light, or not waking up, imagine the power goes out and you look around you and you're just stuck with yourself, like covered in potato chips, obese, unable to move, you've done nothing with your life, you've achieved nothing and you have no memories to look back on. 
oh my gosh, that's a horrifying image. So I'm going to end on something a little more positive (laughs) than that horrifying image. But uh, I'm going to end on a C.S. Lewis quote. And it says, only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. After all, you find out the strength of the German army by fighting it, not by giving in. You find out the strength of the wind by trying to walk against it, not by lying down. A man who gives into temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. I so love C.S. Lewis. I know I like him too. I, I there I go to one of my escapism yeah. heroes from when I was a child. And Me too. <laughs> but anyways, this this one uh, we don't know how long each episode is going to be. If you want it to be shorter, if you want it to be longer, let us know in the comment section. We're just going to be talking about what we love for however much <laughs> time we love. But if you have any suggestions for this podcast, please let us know. And the questions for the next podcast definitely put those below because we will be checking them out and responding next time round. Brittany, any last thoughts? Um, well, I just wanted to mention, actually, that we're going to get an opening designed. Um, yeah, then we're going to work on better equipment. We want to make this as, as good of quality as possible uh, so it's the most enjoyable to you so we don't have, like, fuzzy cutting out, you know. So we want to do our best to to make this a really enjoyable experience, also interactive. And, yeah, we're super excited, and we hope you will be, too. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and check us out on Brittany's podcast on Friday. Yeah. See you there. Bye.